Hello, welcome to Perfection Learning's AP European History Q&A. My name is Joe Bianchi, I'm an editor with Perfection Learning, and I'm joined by special guest Lou Gallo today. Hello, Lou. Hi, Joe, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Lou is an AP teacher, a college board consultant, uh, and an expert in AP European history. He was the reviewer, uh, senior consultant for the AP European history book. We're gonna to talk today with Lou about using the AMSCO AP European history book and how it fits in with the classroom. Lou, you've been a teacher for quite a while. Could you tell us about your background and specifically how long you've been working uh, with AP subjects and, and specifically maybe AP European history? Sure. So I started teaching at my public school, West High School in Knoxville, Tennessee, back in 1994. And we only offered AP US history and I really wanted to teach AP European history. And I, I really pushed. And by 1996, we offered AP Euro for the first time. And we've, it's been a very strong course in our school and has really just continued throughout the years um, as well. And so that was really kind of my background going into it. And it's just the passion that I have for the subject. Uh, recently, uh, I've also worked part time at another school, Dwight Global, located um, based in New York. And that has also been very interesting because I came on and they already had an AP Euro program. But um, I've tried to build that up that AP Euro program and continue to build it up in an online platform. So I've really been able to enjoy both having students in person and students online uh, as part of my career and through my career. So Lou, it's clear you have a, a passion for teaching uh, history in general, but AP European history. How do you get that passion um, across your students? How do you engage them in, in such a difficult subject? kind of emphasize the fact that I'm pretty enthusiastic about the subjects that I'm teaching. So I try to keep a variety of activities in the class, um, different different methods that the students can do in order to learn it, uh, in a way try to individualize it and see what students like. like uh, teaching in a seminar style discussion. I like for students to discuss, but I also like that fact that students can discuss sources um, as well and the primary source that they're reading as another method. Some of the more difficult material I've often found that students like the story they, they like the 10 minute story about the um events that led to the french revolution they like the uh you know story about the power struggle between stalin and trotsky and sometimes they just like stories that they're not going to be tested on but they just keep the interest going so i really try to look at my class look at the look at the students in my class and try to make it more relevant to them um uh, with what they'll do what they will be doing and then finally, I guess one other tip um, that, I, that I would suggest, you have the passion for your subject, which I have, but I think it's important to have to get to know your students, um, get that special relationship with them. Uh, I, I always try to, and, and sometimes it's not easy, I always try to compliment my students at least once every month or month and a half. And sometimes with students who are particularly quiet or uh, withdrawn that that's sometimes difficult but i think just giving them that little bit of attention and discussing something that they've done in a positive way is a way to draw them into you know wanting to learn more and and doing more in your class sure uh, and i have to absolutely agree with you the, the relationship is is something that's irreplaceable between a, a teacher and and his or her students um but i would like to go back for just a second to, to talk about history as a story. Uh, you mentioned that it, as students love when they hear about, when they can engage in history as a story. Um, when we look at the AMSCO book, there are a lot of those opportunities to, to engage students with those stories. Are there any particular events that would stand out to you uh, that would be valuable to, to try and, and promote that relationship that, that students have with, with the story side of history? Actually, I think it really, when you, the course starts with the Renaissance and there's a little bit of, of you know background information that I like to talk about as a teacher, the medieval history, so that they can see the differences between um, medieval scholarship and Renaissance scholarship. Um, However, I find really the, the best story part begins with the Reformation. The so AMSCO book does a really good job talking about Martin Luther and the background. And I think you can further add to that with that story in class. The students usually find it pretty interesting. And the idea of just how important religion was to people. As someone who lives in the Bible Belt, you know, religion is pretty important to a majority of my students. But I, 
they they often find they don't understand just how religion was almost the sole focus for so many people in the world um, and i think that story with that you know 16th century people you know people didn't have they didn't have the phones they didn't have computers they didn't have internet they had god and for many people that's really all they knew and i think bringing that story up with the students it, it just helps them to understand it i also think with the story it's important to keep it not to get too long-winded in your stories um you know i try to keep like the like i said the five to ten minute story that's going to keep your attention but then move on from there sure absolutely well, since we started talking about the AMSCO book, um, can you tell us how you got involved with AMSCO uh, and maybe specifically more about how you got involved in your role with the AMSCO AP European History Book? Sure. Uh, I guess a few years ago when you all were developing the uh, book, I received an email from a former editor with Perfection and asked me if I'd be interested in uh, sending a writing sample. And I, I did, I was, and so I sent a sample and um, he asked if I'd be interested in being one of the senior reviewers for the first edition uh, of the text. And so I found it to be a, a really just a pretty interesting project. Um, I, I, you know, enjoy, like I said, I enjoy history. I enjoy seeing other perspectives. So just reading through it is um, what helped to get me involved in the program uh, with, the, with the text. And I had already used the U.S. History AMSCO text as a supplementary source with my uh, US, AP U.S. history students. So I felt that I wanted to see something like that with the European history. So I really wanted it to be a strong text. So you're talking about the second edition. Can you tell us what has been changed in that revision of the book and, and maybe more importantly, why those changes were made? So I love the second edition. Um, I, I love the second edition because I think it's as it's about to be published, I think it's going to be just a better supplementary text. It's something that can be used. Um, and especially with some of the students that struggle with reading, um, I think it, it really helps some of those students. Um, and so the reason I like it better, the, the first edition uh, followed the College Board course and exam description, which was somewhat thematic by nature. It was divided into four periods. And what I liked about it, I, I particularly liked it as a review text because it would go through these entire themes like for example one of the chapters would go from world war one through the cold war and i liked it as a review i didn't however like that as far as some of my students that i really wanted to focus on you know with the amsco to help them with the readings i struggled with the way it was organized it didn't really work well in that thematic review for a student to go world war one world war two cold war and then the next chapter back up to the Russian Revolution. And so the new edition follows the college, the new College Board course and exam description, which divides into topics that, although a little thematic, they're definitely more chronological, um, follows more the periods of history. And just the, I think the organization is better for those students. And once again, you know, I, I use the AMSCO to really help um, the students as a supplemental source in my class to help the students that struggle with the textbook. And those students with the first edition I think struggle somewhat with the chronology of it. I think this newer edition is really going to help those students even more. Absolutely. It is a very readable book. It's a student friendly book. Um, are there any other points about it that you think make it uh, more usable for AP students today? I do. I think it. Um, I think it's a really good introduction to some of the subjects. Um, we talked about the story and the fact that they can read about this and then we can trigger discussions. Um, of course, you need to use other, whether it's another textbook or I, I like to use other primary sources, um, even secondary sources. And I think the, you know, I, I look at the AMSCO book as kind of, it's it's providing a nice, a nice foundation to delve deeper into different topics in European history, using other sources to even move forward. So I, that's really what I like it the best for. Absolutely. So can you go into a little more depth, a little more specificity, maybe about how you use it, what the, the benefits are for students um, in your particular classroom? Sure. So in my particular classroom, we have a, a different textbook as the primary text, and I often assign that uh, reading from those textbooks. And again, I feel that reading any of the textbooks is going to trigger that discussion. Um, I have, like I said, found it really most useful with some of my students uh, who perhaps might struggle a little bit with English language um, or who love history, but struggle with some of the wordiness of the uh, 
larger textbooks. And so I've, I've used it in that respect as a supplementary source, um, as a way for those students to better understand the topics. Because again, these students, while they might struggle with the reading, they can contribute equally to the discussion of some of the students who have no struggles with the reading. And I think that that helps them with class discussion. I also think it, it helps them with uh, analyzing primary sources. As um, any experienced AP history teacher would know, the DBQ and the sourcing, the fact that you're looking at the point of view, uh, purpose, audience, um, and historical situation of different documents. And so as we analyze primary sources in class, we can look at those primary sources and apply the historical situation that they may have learned from the AMSCO um, book or any other book that, that gives them that background. And especially if you're getting into some sources and more difficult subjects, sometimes it might be a good idea um, even if the student's using another textbook, just to kind of look at the the 10 minute version in the AMSCO book and then practice historical situation, practice purpose um, as we're doing these primary sources, analyzing these primary sources. So that's the first thing I found it very useful for. Mm -hmm. The second thing I found it uh, very useful for is review for the exam. Um, I think it's a, it is a concise book. It's succinct. Um, it really focuses on the key concepts that students are required to know for the exam. They can actually use that as kind of a guide to go through and review for the exam. And it, it really works quite well because they can do that in a month and really get a, a good review of the material that they've already learned once. Lou, you mentioned practice. Can you speak a little bit more about how the AMSCO AP European History Book gives students ample opportunities to practice and, and to refine their, their skills? Yes. Um, first of all, I think every chapter has some multiple choice questions, short answer questions, essays, and then there are periodic DBQs throughout the book. So uh, I, I love the fact that, you know, it's, you know, a reasonable amount of reading and the students can go and get some practice as they go throughout the year. And I think that practice is always important. And secondly, because like I said, for, with some of the readers who might struggle a bit, many of the questions, the students are able to answer them based on the content that's in the textbook, which I think also helps them to, as they want to practice with the writing and developing uh, developing the writing. For example, with the short answer question, I often encourage students to ape the question, answer the question, provide evidence and explain. And the short answer questions are phrased in a way that students can do that in two or three sentences for each part where they are just simply answering the question and giving the evidence and a very brief explanation. And so the, to me, the more they practice and the more they're familiar with that, when they actually take the AP exam, there's no surprises. Every, everything is what they've really been practicing. The questions are worded in a way, uh, especially the free response questions are worded in a way which um, they'll see on the exam. And that also is quite beneficial as they're preparing for the exam. With questions after every topic, there are so many opportunities, but I, I think you mentioned this and I'd like to expand on it maybe a little bit. And if you'd add to it, certainly. Um, there's questions after a small amount of content. So for students that may be new to AP or may struggle with reading, the frequency of the questions and the smaller amount of content that applies to each questions can be very valuable to students as they hone their skills and as they work through the process of answering AP level questions. Oh, absolutely. That, that's one of, that's what I really like about frequent practice of questions is that they are learning it and it, it does build their confidence if they can do that. Um, I've, you know, before I've used short answer questions as, uh, not short answer questions, some of the multiple choice questions as a bell ringer in class. They've gone over the readings and now we can discuss this. And again, building up that confidence level in some of those students that this is a very doable thing. We all know European history is a hard class, but it is a very doable class. And we wanna show that, you know, if you're willing to put the work into it, you can have success in this class. And I think those, those frequent questions allows that to happen for the students. Absolutely. You're the recipient of the Milken National Educator Award. That was a, um, an award and you received it uh, without knowing that you were about to receive it. <laughs> what a surprise. Can you tell us about that experience? Sure. So it, it was, a, I was a little bit younger. Uh, the surprise, it, it was a bit overwhelming. I, they asked me to make a speech and I couldn't. I, I was just, you know, kind of floored. Uh, it, it took me some time to compose myself, but it 
what it really did for me as an educator, it helped me to realize that I have influence. Um, I was able to meet several politicians. I was able to, to talk. I've been, since that it's opened up many opportunities. I've been on state review boards for curriculum. I have uh, been, really I've just, you know, I found out about oppor other opportunities. I, was able, I ran the torch in the 2012 Olympics in Scotland. And part of that was a result of the uh, Milken program reaching out to me saying, would you be, would you be interested in applying for this and doing this? It's just been a phenomenal experience. The Milken program is so supportive of education and so supportive of teachers. It's just been really just a great experience um, in my life. Um, and I love that it was a surprise, but I will say this, there are so many other teachers that are just deserving of that award. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. That sounds like one of those great big moments in teaching, but also <laughs> those great little moments too. Um, wow. that, that's, that sounds like a wonderful experience.